this exists. Underwhelming running close-up establishing shot cliche. Excessively prominent shadow. I got your text, Rainbow Dash. That is a line which you should never hear in a My Little Pony movie. I was in the middle of sewing a very complex applique on my latest frock. A fact which Rarity emphasizes by making the conscious decision to bring her fashion designing supplies. Return of the invisible amplifiers. Sunset staying behind could be viewed as suspicious if it wasn't for the cheerful background music to imply otherwise. Twilight times the bus stop surprisingly well considering the tiny window of opportunity. But I still can't quite grasp what it's all about. Movie lets you think that it will provide answers before the credits roll. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Twilight's BS detector is at full capacity. Just to be on the safe side, Hasbro puts a subtle copyright symbol in front of their largest toy placements. This driveway to the parking lot disappears. Sunset sucks at Frogger. Imagine a world in which we don't have the opportunity to see every door Twilight walks through. Cease and desists can't melt steel beams. More than two minutes of logos and opening credits. Every word that comes from Applejack's mouth is a lie. We know this because later in the movie it's explained that she ponies up when telling the truth. They still have to gloat! Complaining about gloating, coming from Rainbow Dash. Not everything has to be magical to be important. Who is she trying to convince? Sunset? Or us? Sunset has been a student here for years, but doesn't know about this event simply because they have to explain it to the audience. This time, things are gonna be different. Irony. Fun fact, Celestia's legs require clearance from the FAA to be at this altitude. Adagio's fins are purple for some reason. Your headcanon about her being mute has just been silenced. Fluttershy's kind words here and in every other part of the movie were obviously sarcastic, otherwise she would have ponied up for expressing kindness. Is anybody else wondering how Dash ponied up without playing her guitar? Most of us are still wondering why it happens when she is playing the guitar. Movie puts alternate dimension Twilight in competing school against all pre-established logic because it's convenient for the plot. Spike getting hit by a door cliche transcends dimensions. Another me I have in there. Not so subtle foreshadowing. Something to fill this hole inside. Silly Twilight, hollow plastic is cheaper. Reflections. How do they work? Shining Armor needlessly hides behind this door long enough to qualify as a professional stalker and or axe murderer. Shining Armor serves no purpose in this movie besides placing a check on the list of toys which were mandated to get screen time. As an alumni... Alumni is plural, therefore Shining Armor is actually two small people disguised as one. Fluttershy has no reaction upon hearing that Twilight attends Crystal Prep, waiting in line because the script demands it despite the fact that students have already boarded. Twilight claims that she didn't cut in line intentionally, then she proceeds to cut in line intentionally. Ponying up sure isn't new to the franchise, but with each movie it makes less and less sense. This isn't Equestria. Which is why Equestria is in the title, naturally. It's quite clear that Rarity enjoys designing fashion. One could say that she went overboard with a number of outfits simply due to an understandably selfish desire to engage in her interests. Yet the movie tries to pass off this simple recurring gag as some major milestone in Rarity's development just to justify a pony up. Twilight bumps into Brad for the sixth time in the franchise. Best Pony comforts Worst Human. If she's ponying up because making outfits exhibits generosity, why would this not happen while creating the outfits? And why does this happen minutes after presenting the outfits to her friends? Mr. Plot Convenience strikes again. And magic too, I guess. Sunset is starting to sound like a faltering Equestria Girls fan. Oh yeah, that happens now too, I guess. Spike just happens to blow his cover at a time where he wouldn't get caught. Celestia wants to keep magic a secret from Cinch, so naturally she would bring her to the one classroom where magic is commonly present. Pinky is usually funny when she doesn't make any sense. Since she's nothing more than a conduit of exposition here in Equestria Girls, she tends to have the opposite effect. Magic came into this world when I stole Twilight's crown. Technically, magic came into this world when the portal first opened up, since the portal itself is in fact magical. What we needed to defeat them was you. What they actually needed to defeat the Sirens was a completely arbitrary song which just happened to have an open spot for another singer. Twilight has been standing next to the portal for quite some time, yet only now does the pendant decide to notice it. Pony Twilight apparently left the portal open so anyone can just waltz on into Equestria. When designing this building, someone made the conscious decision not to use a normal light switch here. Pinky literally brings guns to school. This cup is levitating. The rotation of the disco ball is inconsistent. Trenderhoof isn't stealing anyone's waifu in this scene. Canterlot High continues to pick its competitors in a popularity contest. Obviously, bronies were included in the poll. 
But remember, only the six students from each team with the most points will move on to event number two. Which is worse, the fact that there just happens to be six main characters in this movie, or the fact that all six just happen to qualify? No one ties up their hair while in the chemistry lab. That's a major issue considering how common outrageous hairstyles are in this world. I'm so angry, I'm going to massage the nose I don't have. Eco Kid and Science Guy should have been the two most qualified people to make a birdhouse. The movie became too lazy to make any more sly names based on the show, so it instead steals names directly. Answers differ despite showing the same work. Now you're thinking with portals. Element of kindness magic can make animals talk because reasons. Vague threats to motivate the equally vague objective of non-specific spying. This facial expression is highly offensive and should be censored immediately. Motocross track intersects the speed skating course, as if all this wasn't stupidly dangerous enough. Archery, speed skating, motocross. School does not understand the meaning of liability or insurance bills. And aim at where the target's gonna be. Twilight didn't already know this, and she's supposed to be the smart one. Twilight witnesses all of the terrible things the pendant does, but instead of confining it to a safe environment, she carries it around everywhere she goes. No one immediately notices these dimensional rifts and otherworldly monsters. The scoring system is so arbitrary that even the animators give up on it mid-competition. These LEDs don't follow a grid pattern. Rarity's impossible leg strength. Animators confuse landing pad and jump. We can still win this! Monsters are attacking students, yet this completely pointless race has to continue at all cost. This is not even remotely competitive or sensible in any way. As soon as Dash starts glowing, Principal Cinch scowls with suspicion. Somehow, this is significantly more eye-catching than the bright purple portals and giant monsters which her own student had summoned. Canterlot wins! <laughs> Canterlot wins? Are we not going to consider the fact that a monster just attacked the competition? Twilight's pendant waits a minute and a half before absorbing Dash's magic because it would have interrupted important expositional dialogue otherwise. It also causes these corresponding rifts to appear. Twilight doesn't understand the meaning of the word corresponding. The word she should have used would be random, or the phrase a contrived source of conflict to progress the story in a timely manner. Equestria? Tara Strong doesn't know if her character is supposed to recognize that word or not. You can't possibly call that a fair race. Easily agreed upon statement coming from the villain who we're not supposed to agree with. Your students have wings. Cinch does not sound nearly as surprised as she should. Perhaps we should end the games now and declare a tie. Trollestia strikes again. Principal Cinch clearly blames Canterlot High for the magical shenanigans. Anyone paying attention would blame Twilight for bringing the magic to the games. Of course, anyone that watches Cinemare Sins knows that, as usual, Spike ruined everything. Principal Cinch thinks we're cheating. Implying Canterlot High actually won fair and square. Main cast forms a circle to sling exposition at the screen in case the audience has forgotten everything before this point. Evil antagonists are evil and antagonistic because it's convenient for the plot. Twilight removes the pendant only for it to reappear around her neck. Twilight isn't holding the pendant much differently here, but for some reason the pendant decides to go full-on Dragon Ball Z simply because the movie needed a climax. Twilight goes from sweet and innocent to a greedy genocidal maniac, then back to sweet and innocent in the span of just a few minutes. You want a pony movie? <laughs> well, here's your movie, there's your pony, now shut up and buy more toys. If Principal Cinch can't be bothered to stick around to see what happens next, why should we, the audience? These humans clearly enter Equestria without turning into ponies. Even this movie agrees that the mirror's logic behind transforming characters based on the world they are in is completely arbitrary. These students don't think that running away from mortal danger would be a good idea. I've been where you are. I've made the same mistake you're making. Third movie confesses to being a repeat of the first. The Human Five still possess their magic even after having their magic taken away because it's convenient for the plot. Sunset clearly harnesses the same magic as Twilight, therefore proving that evil Twilight isn't a product of evil magic, but rather her own greed for power. I plan on taking all of this up with the school board! Good. I'm sure they would be very interested in hearing all about the magical students with wings. Celestia forgets that cell phones exist, and that everything has probably already been uploaded to YouTube by at least a dozen students. I'm not so sure now is the time for me to apply to Everton. Movie takes the best example of a concept which even remotely resembles stakes or motive of a character and throws it out the window. You could transfer to this school. It's a piece of cake to get in this school. Just walk in and tell everyone you're new. No one will think anything of it. I think I may have figured out how magic works in this world. 
We pony up when we're showing the truest part of ourselves. Throughout the movie, the audience has kept wondering what the answer to this mystery was, but the final explanation is basically, magic happened, so screw you. Why, you ask? Why not?